from the Leaders Factory comes Leadership Secrets with Dr. Michael Huttonwood, designed to help you maximize your potential with principles that guarantee proven results. Knowing and cultivating certain attitudes about yourself will give you the mindset you need to develop your leadership potential to the fullest and fulfill all that you are born to do. Join Dr. Michael Huttonwood for Leadership by Creativity, Principles for Success, Secrets for Creating Change, and much more. You are born to lead. Jesus came to restore you back to leadership. Get back your leadership position. Let the earth know that you were here. Join your host, Dr. Michael Huttonwood, a man on a mission, and experience a destiny-changing encounter counter with today's message on Leadership Secret. Join us for three hours of non-stop prayer and expect power, favor, healings, anointing, the word, business and career, and marriage breakthroughs, prophecies, miracles, signs and wonders. Date, first Saturdays of every month. Time, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, UK time. Venue, House of Judah, the Happy Church, first floor, Palm Corey House, 387 London Road, Croydon, CRO 3PB UK. Visit www.houseofjuda.org.uk. For further inquiries, call 0208-689-6010. Talk somebody, tell somebody, share this link with somebody and invite them to this service of the release of God's kindness in our lives. Tell your neighbor, God will show you great kindness. There should be some enthusiasm about that. I said, tell somebody, God will show you great kindness. Do you believe what you are saying? God will show you great kindness. I can hear somebody right now in my spirit saying, Charlie, I haven't seen kindness for quite a while. So that's why... I'm finding it difficult to confess what Bishop is saying. But listen to me. We are not moved by what we see. We are not moved by what we hear. We are not moved by what we feel. We are not moved by what we taste. We are not moved by the economy. We are only moved by the word of God. If somebody is alive and well, can they scream right here and let me know I'm in the right atmosphere? We are not moved by what we hear. I heard the word God is about to show us some kindness. And I know when I hear some of this, and I know this one is God who is talking. I'm telling you, it doesn't matter what it looks like. God today will show you kindness. There's a song in Nigeria, Ghana, they say, Today, 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 Jesus will do wonders. Today, today. When? 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 Sing it. To, you are confessing. Hey. When will he do it? Sing it all. I say. I'm expecting it. Today, today. When? What will he do? I say today, today. When? What will he do? Clap for Jesus, somebody. This is our House of Judas rendition. We are about to release our CD. We're going to the studio this week to release House of Judas' verse. Shout amen. It's going to happen. Write it down. Whilst I'm standing here, when I say things, it's inspired. Shout amen. Okay, Second Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 to 4. Once again, you are all welcome in the house. It's good to see uh, Full House, and it's good to see those watching online. Join in, take your Bibles, get excited. Amen. Amen. Don't let anything distract you. Come off your phones and just focus. Because one word from God can change your life forever. All you need is one word. That's why the Roman centurion said, you don't need to come to my house. Just send the word. And the word I have heard for you is God is going to show us kindness. Great kindness. 
I was here, 4 a.m., sitting in my seat, walking, pacing back and forth, saying, Father, confirm this word in the life of your people in this church. 4 a.m., I was here, pacing back and forth, anointing the place with oil. That's why you saw the oil coming up. Yeah. These are spiritual things. I came here to pray 4 a.m. one of these days. And when I got here, when I came up, everything was fine. There was nothing wrong outside. Then when I descended on my way out to go back home, there was powder. Powder in front of our church premises. Powder. Powder. Light powder in front of the house before you climb the, the, the step and open the door. Powder. Whilst I was here praying, somebody has poured. These are spiritual things. What is powder doing there? It was not there when I came. So I came back up and took the blood and took the oil. And I said, pour it over it and nullify whatever it was. Yeah, don't take anything for granted. This week, my wife and I decided we're going to anoint our house and our compound with oil. So when you come to our house, when you look... When you see the house in front of the, the house, the wall, the garden, the grass, everything, you can tell the difference between our, what is in front of our house and what is in front of everybody. You can, it's there. Demarcation. That don't come here. Don't do your things here. You can, jump, you can jump from the house before to the other one, but don't do anything here. The oil is telling you this is a no-go area. There are things you shouldn't play with. When I tell you, anoint your house with oil. Don't say my house will be dirty. No. Today, your wonders must come today. So, you need to do spiritual things. <laughs> do it everywhere. My son asked me when I came in, did you anoint the chair? Did you pour oil on the stairs? I said, no. I poured it in front and it's having an overall effect on the stairs. Yeah. Oil. Get oil and, and anoint your house. In front, at the back. <laughs> Get those birds that have been flying and misbehaving and making you fight unnecessarily and argue unnecessarily. Get, get, do spiritual warfare. Don't say it doesn't make sense. God does not make sense. Those of you who are here who say you are born again. When did you see Jesus in your heart? When did you see him, when did you see him with your face? But you believe that once you confess Jesus and believe in you, he has come to live inside you. It's the same with the mysteries of God. Anything that has prevented kindness from being shown to you today is coming to an end. I must be hearing some better amens this morning. I said God will show you kind, great kindness from today. 2 Samuel chapter 9 verse 1 to 4. We are beginning like I began, like I said, fasting your seat belts for eight weeks. Today we are going the opposite we are beginning a six weeks of motivation. The devils in the spirit have been dealt with. Now, for the next six Sundays, is motivation Sundays. It is what Sundays? Motivation. It is what Sundays? <laughs> Every discouragement is leaving you. Amen. Mama B, um, I sent some things, but their response is not helping me deliver the thing. There must be some enthusiasm and, and are you understanding what? Don't kill my fire. I came here for you. Say a bigger amen so you can go home with your kindness. When something is on me, I know. Everybody scream, God will show me great kindness. Whether you like it or not. Listen. Oh God, I'm already there. Listen. When God wants to bless you, he doesn't need anybody's permission. When God wants to favor you, <laughs> when God wants to bless you, when God wants to show you mercy, he doesn't need anybody's permission to do it or not do it. This time, he made up his mind, he will show you and this church great kindness. Amen three times. Whoa, whoa. You don't have to believe it. I'm, you don't have to see it to believe it. I'm telling you, the kindness is beginning from today. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 to 4. We have scripture to back what we are saying. 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1 to 4. And David said, watch this. You know, there are some people who, who, when they don't pay them for one week or one month, they get heart attack. 
That is, that's not evident for all to see. The story must change. I said the story must change. From today, you won't be waiting for your salary before you do certain things. God will show you great kindness. You don't need to wait for your salary before you do great things from now. Amen must come quickly. Who is receiving this prophecy? <laughs> I didn't come here to teach. Today I came to preach. To motivate you. Second Samuel 9, 1 to 4. And David said, Is there yet a listen? David, King David, David is a king. He's sitting in some place. Gets up one morning. This one is going to happen to somebody. David woke up one morning and he said. Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that was King Saul, that I may show him what? Kindness for whose sake? For Jonathan's sake. Now, King Saul gave birth to a son called Jonathan, and Jonathan befriended David. Now, Jonathan could tell by David's countenance and behavior that he had the potential to become a king. So, a time came when King Saul passed away, and then Jonathan also passed away. They went, they passed away in a war. So this uh, Jonathan had a son called Mephibosheth. Everybody say Mephibosheth. Now, in their depart, there was a war, and in their departing town, he fell. He was, he was young, so he fell and then became lame. He couldn't walk. And so he was taken into a particular house and taken care of. Now, David was not aware of all this, but just woke up one morning. I'm telling you that after this service, Somebody is going to wake up in the morning and ask, is there any left of your father, your father's children, your mother's children, that I want to, sh I feel like showing kindness to one of, jo one, of so one of Jonathan's children. Is there any left of the members of House of Judah, the remnant, that I want to show somebody is about to wake up this week? beginning from today to say is there any left in house of judah for me to show them some kindness for remaining in house of judah and serving in house of judah i felt this morning i was hearing in my spirit this is going to be a prophetic service so it's your amens that will release as i'm speaking a prophetic service is different from a teaching service a teaching service is line upon line. A prophetic service, as we are speaking, there's impartation of graces. Is there yet any left of the house of Saul that I may show kindness for whose sake? So, so, <laughs> the son of Jonathan is about to be shown kindness for his father's sake. So it's even not because of him. Bishop Dr. Michael Hutton Wood, the senior pastor of House of Judah, UK, the Happy Church, presents six dynamic life-changing books that will catapult you to higher heights entitled, Success Has No Uncles, 12 Cancers to Avoid at All Costs in Leadership, Ministry, and Management. You have only one life. Make it count. Understanding and releasing the power of first fruit offerings and tithes. Invoking the incredible power of altars and sacrifices. Forgive, but don't forget. Success is self-determined. Success consists of little daily efforts, and failure consists of little daily neglects. Daniel said, I understood by books. No matter what life throws at you, stay focused and keep moving through relevant and current information. These books are definitely a must for your library. Order your copies today by calling or visiting our website www.housejitta.org.uk or using the information on your screen. show you kindness because of your senior pastor sick. I said may God show you kindness because of your father and your bishop and your senior pastor sick. So there's some blessings called for somebody sick. One day God came to Solomon and said I won't destroy the house of this house of Israel because of your father. Jonathan didn't do nothing. 
Mephibosheth didn't do nothing, but he was about to be shown kindness because of some kindness his father did to David. God will remember us all. I said today, God will remember us. I said today, God will remember us. In every service, there are those who receive and those who don't receive. There are spectators and those who catch. Your Kairos moment must not leave you because you never know when your word will come in the midst of the service for you to catch. This is not for your husband. This is not for your wife. This is for you. So catch it. <laughs> Stay alert. Is there any left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? So something good or a good deed that your father did or a seed that he sowed will be remembered by a king or a prominent person and you'll be shown that kindness. Amen. Shout amen. amen. I had a saying from Bishop Oedipo this morning. He said, there is nothing you do today that's not waiting for your children tomorrow. There is nothing you do today that is not waiting for your children tomorrow, good or bad. That's why people need to be very careful when they are dealing with church people and the house of God and churches and dealing with you. There's nothing you and I do today that is not waiting for your children tomorrow. So if you are supposed to tithe and you won't tithe, it's waiting, the, the devourer is waiting for your children tomorrow. That's why you need the kindness of God. Your service, your prayer, your church attendance, everything is being secured for your children. That's why you're bringing this your grandchildren. There's nothing you do today that is not waiting for your children and your grandchildren tomorrow. That's why you shouldn't look at anybody's Christianity to determine your own. That's why you shouldn't look at somebody's tithing or not tithing to determine. It says he's about to show you, you, you kindness, not somebody else. <laughs> am I speaking or am I speaking? I feel like carrying the pulpit. There is nothing I do today that is not waiting for my children to. That, that's why, that's why I serve the way I serve. That's why I tithe the way I tithe. I know it's waiting. The results are waiting. For my children tomorrow, or if I'm not doing it, there are consequences. It's consequent, but he wanted to emphasize that this thing is it. Consequences. There are rewards or consequences. It's not con. It's crazy. It's not a joke. It's, it's, it's real. It's for you to understand that consequences are crazy. There's nothing you and I do today that, that is not waiting for our children. So, what do you want to wait for your children tomorrow? What do you want to meet your children and your grandchildren tomorrow? That's why my grandson cannot say I'm not coming to church, or my granddaughter cannot say I won't go. But I can't say I'm not praising God. I'm not, I'm not, you know. When he attempts to lie down somewhere, I do my head this way. That means no. When I do, it's not only his father who corrects them. Me too, I'm here. We play. When it's time to play, we play. When it's time to shout, we say, Baba! He understands because something is waiting for him tomorrow. And I want only good things to wait for him tomorrow. This clapping, this clapping. God wants to show you great kindness. So don't compromise when you have to deal with your children. And when it's time to give and sow and those things, do it. Then that's another seat. Another statement that came, never plant thorns on someone's path. Your children may decide to take that route barefooted one day. Never plant thorns on someone's path. Your children may decide to take that path barefooted on that uh, one of the days. The, the idea, the point is, anything you do, your children will inherit it. That's the point. So tell your children, God is about to show us great kindness. That's why we are serving God the way we are serving God. It's going to get colder as we are approaching November and December. This is the time where you must Kenya your home and come to church. And for God to show you kindness. Everybody say Kenya. Kenya. Say Kenya. Kenya. Uh -huh. You have to Kenya yourself. Uh -huh. God has intended six solid Sundays of kindness. 
<laughs> Bishop Akoto Bafu will bring the next kindness next Sunday, and then we shall follow through for six weeks. Kindness, kindness, kindness for six Sundays. Best place to be is the house of God. Everybody say in the name of Jesus. Anybody who has been assigned to arise and show me kindness, hear my voice now. Hear my voice now. Hear my voice now and show me great kindness as God has commanded. A clap offering will be very good at this particular point in time. They will not sit down until they bring you your kindness. <laughs> It's going to happen life. Listen, I hear in my spirit. Listen, I, I, this is what I just heard. Don't be surprised if one of these days, some people who don't like you cry, come to bless you. I was driving somewhere and I heard that, what if, I, I, think I, I, I don't know whether it's God speaking or I picked up, what if some of your enemies bring you a birthday gift during your birthday? Will you receive it? I said, of course. <laughs> Bishop, I couldn't sleep. And I felt led, I still need to bless you on your birthday. It's going to happen life. Oh, your envy is too much. Receive, say amen so your own two will come. Are you aware that God uses enemies to bless us? Oh, yeah. He used Cyrus to bless the people to build the house of Israel. He said, I will lay a table before you <laughs> in the presence of your enemy. Oh, I... Because I'm, I'm totoying. Listen, I, I feel that the kindness coming is too great for you. What we need to actually, thank you, Holy Ghost. What we need to, I think you need to pray a prayer because the kindness is going to be so big that you don't need to backslide when you see it. Lift your hand. Say, Father, the kindness that is coming. May I not forget you. May I not backslide when I see the size of the kindness. May I not forget God or forget my pastor, or forget my church. I will not backslide when this kindness begins today. A better amen to that will help you. Because the tendency of you switching when you see some blessing is great. Because of the spirit of forgetfulness, that tempts all of us. Verse 2. And there was of the house of Saul, are you there? There was of the house of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. Everybody say Ziba. Ziba. And, and, and when they had called unto, when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, Are you Ziba? And he said, Thy servant is he. Then the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul? that I may show the kindness of God unto him. Are you there? Yes, and Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? Tell your neighbor, they will ask, Where are you? Say, they will ask, Where am I? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, in Lodeba. Because of what happened, he ended up in low there by a place of insignificant. You know, when you're going through difficulty, you end up among vagrants and, you know, you have given up on life. Every person today, under the sound of my voice, in this house and online, anyone in low Deba, I said, they are coming to look for you. I said, they are coming to look for you. I said, they are coming to look for you. If your amen is louder, it will come quickly. It doesn't matter where you are hiding. God can see you there. He, can, he will come and find us. I said they are coming to find us. I said they are coming to find us. People's situations can be changed overnight by the good hand of God. Just like Joseph's life was changed, Mordecai's life was changed. Mordecai used to be standing at the gate. He ended up in the bungalow of Haman, the wicked man. Mordecai used to be an agate man. When God changed his story, he inherited Haman's house and palace. Haman wanted to kill all the Jews, but in one day, a gate man became a palace owner. As I'm going along, you will discover that your residence is about to change. From council flat to your own flat. 
from residence association house to your own association. Oh, I don't think, I think. If you are watching online and you haven't given your life to Jesus, you want to experience the kindness of God, the gateway to that is submitting your life to Jesus. So you want to give your life to Jesus, pray this brief prayer with me right now. Let's all pray this prayer with them on the screen. And if you are in the house, you are not born again, pray this prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, thank you for the word of God. You have promised to show me great kindness. I submit my life to you, Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Forgive me for my sins. I open my heart up and submit my life to you. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Join us for three hours of non-stop prayer and expect power, favor, healings, anointing, the word, business and career, and marriage breakthroughs, prophecies, miracles, signs and wonders. Date, first Saturdays of every month. Time, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, UK time. Venue, House of Judah, The Happy Church, First Floor Palm Croy House, 387 London Road, Croydon, CRO 3PB UK. Visit www.houseofjudah.org.uk. UK. For further inquiries, call 0208-689-6010. Thank you for tuning in to Maximizing Destiny with Dr. Michael Hutton Wood from the House of Judah, the Leadership Factory, raising generational leaders, impacting the nations. We hope you have been blessed. 